Chris, it's... win a rumble in your life. <laughs> All right, we're going. How many years has it been? You never won one. Hello, welcome hey, to another go. edition of Tuesday Morning Shenanigans, and we are inside Maui Comics and Collectibles. Drewing number one, I am Aaron of the Rave Corner. Drewing number two, we got Daniel Wimplow eighty six. During number three, we got Swan the War Chief. Five, and four, drawing in number three, four, two, one. We oh! got also <laughs> <laughs> one half. Let me tell you something, brother. Let me tell you something, wait, wait, brother. Wait, wait, I'm gonna do the miss. I came to play. Stop <laughs> I came to play. Stop going slim, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, he's doing a Curtis Axel impression. That's my that's Love my wrestling that. impression. And, and Savage. So today no, we're that's Damien Mizdow. Damien Mizdow. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> to, oh, no, I'm sorry, Macho Mandel. So Macho today Man. we are going to be talking a little bit about the Royal Rumble because Royal as Rumble. is tradition in WWE, every January, turn the New Year's, they have the Royal is Rumble. Is that pretty soon already? In two weeks, right? Or from or January 29, I think is a okay. Date. Yeah, not too far away. Yeah. So, uh, basically, the whole premise of the Royal Rumble, of course, we do have singles matches before leading up to the main event, which is the Royal Rumble event. Basically, a uh, Royal Rumble is 30 guys who are going to fight against each other, and the only way to get a man out is by throwing them over the top rope and have both feet touch the floor. However, 30 men will not be in the ring at the same time. Instead, we will start off with two men in a ring, mm -hmm. and for every two minutes, another guy comes in and joins in on the fight. Two and men enter, one man leaves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> two men enter, about 28 more will join in if the previous ones are still in the ring. Okay, one man, but one man will leave. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> yeah, and the way this is determined is that, well, they, they say that before the match, each wrestler yeah, a draw. draw a number, and then that's how things get randomized. Oh. And so, with that said, you guys have any favorite Royal Rumble events that you would well, love to rewatch over and over again? If none of you guys followed Aaron's very educated version, here's a simple one. It's a reverse battle royale. How is it? Yeah. You go in with one guy instead of 30 Where guys starting. I, I call it a gauntlet you. battle royal. Uh, you can say it like that. I call it a reverse one because that's what Vince McMahon even said. A Watch reverse. the documentary. Yeah. A Okay. Because <laughs> it's instead of you starting with 30 guys in there, you start with two guys in and then 30 guys end up in there somehow. If the, if uh, all of the previous 28 can still stay in the ring. Mm. I don't that, know, man. That really I never want to stand in there. That sounds like a lot of testosterone in that ring. It is a lot of testosterone. A, a lot of tension lot of from each other. To... <laughs> a lot of sweaty, shirtless guys. Especially if you got the <laughs> ones with the really hair. Harry chest uh, and have him rub up on you like how I did on John to Ben Cena, Stiller. He has some fetish about AAing every single person in the ring. <laughs> it makes it easier for everyone else. You just grab the hair and throw them off. You, you know, Swan has you said You twist that. their nipples and you push them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, basically, my, uh, my favorite Royal Rumble event, and I think this applies to Daniel as well because I actually introduced him in his very first full-length event would be Royal Rumble 1992. Yep. Yep. It is the mm. one where Ric Flair drew number three. <laughs> and he won. And he won. Ever <laughs> and but he lasted at least 60 minutes but what made it so good was the fact that Bobby Heenan was his financial consultant in other <laughs> words his second manager alongside Mr. Perfect uh, but at the same time he had to do his job Bobby had to call the match along with Gorilla Monsoon but he's also watching Ric Flair get pummeled so you know he will freak out <laughs> like oh what are you doing like you know, get, get off of them Haku <laughs> oh thank you I never thought I'd say this thank you Jim Duggan get him off of Ric Flair <laughs> or you know he would scream this is not fair to Flair <laughs> oh my god and there was the one time where Roddy Piper actually uh, saved Flair from an attack and he says I never thought I would say this but thank you Roddy it's not a <laughs> it's not a skirt it's a kilt and then when Roddy turns around and punches for a back and he's Bobby says, "You no good punk, you stupid freak. It's not a, it's not a skirt. It's a it's kill. A I mean, it's not it's a, a kill. kill it's, it's a skirt. skirt. Yeah, <laughs> it's that kind of stuff. And it had like everything was against him too. I know hilarious. a controversial yeah. one was when Hulk Hogan was pulled out by his ankle from the ring, and the ref called it as an emblem." An elimination. Wasn't it? Well, it was. Yeah, because um, he got pulled under the rope on that one, and then. Savage if you're talking one. about oh well that was a that was a different one yeah but that's um, not the one I'm 
you're probably thinking about. No, in 92, yeah. it was actually Sid Justice oh, no, who about was screwed different. over. I know. But... but isn't it funny, like, how Hulk Hogan is always the most victimized person in the, back, in the <laughs> yeah, Royal Rumble? Yeah. Or even leading up to a championship match? I well, mean, when you are the early age John Cena, don't you expect yeah. it? <laughs> but in, in regards to Hulk Hogan, it's one of those things where he'll go to the back to Mean Gene or he'll just con- constantly complain to the ref or Jack Tunney and, and, and demand justice and then he'll eventually get his justice <laughs> and, and that's what happened in royal rumble 92 mm-hmm. uh it was just down to three men it was rick flair said justice and hulk hogan and then when said justice oh no no actually no hulk hogan was eliminated by sid when hulk's back was turned and hulk was like yo brother i thought we were friends and Sid's like are you are you talking to me i'm brother. not your friend you know that kind of stuff and then Hulk is like, I'm not going to have any of this. So he, he grabs Sid by the arm. And so at that point, Sid is, has his, um, you know, he's arching oh, yeah, over the top this. rope. And then Flair's like, oh, now's my chance. Flips Sid over yeah. with the assist from Hulk Hogan. And mm-hmm. Flair wins it. And, of course, Bobby the Brain Heenan goes ballistic over his head. Sid. <laughs> he keeps sure. screaming, woo, <laughs> woo, give me one monster. Woo, I, he did it. He did it. I told you he'd do it. And, you know, that kind this of stuff. This post-interview um, was hilarious, too. One of, yeah, probably one of the best. Um, <laughs> basically, he says, uh, oh, boy, if I can remember this correctly, I, uh, it went, um, oh, yeah, I have to say, with uh, all the video distorting, uh, to walk around and proclaim to be the real world's champion, I want to tell you all with a tear <laughs> in my eye. <laughs> this, this is the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> when you go around and tell people that you are number one, the only way you could be, wait, stay number one is to be number one. And this is the only title in the wrestling world that makes you number one. Think about it like that. Oh, Mr. Perfect, the brain. Woo! And Ray's like, let's hear a big one. Woo! You would think you'd really, be exhausted by then. He really <laughs> sold it. it. He really yeah. sold it, man. But yeah. you guys had any favorite Royal Rumble uh, moments? Um, I know for me, um, it was it was not the Royal Rumble itself. The Royal Rumble itself. It was the, it was a single match that took place at Royal Rumble at the I think it was Madison Square Garden late nineties. Yeah, yeah. And it was very warm. Good. Yeah, and it was. <laughs> <Warm summer's Eve. laughs> it was Winter's the Eve. it was the the big hype. A match between Triple H and Cactus Jack. Oh, that was that a good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was, it was, yeah. it was like, like only a month ago before Royal Rumble, that uh, Cactus Jack came back on the scene. And exactly. <laughs> Um, it, it, it was, he was the only guy that could take care of Triple H at the time. Yeah, at right. the time, it was when Triple H made uh, Mankind feel very dispirited, and we thought we would uh, see the last of I mean, Mankind. there's a difference between Cactus Jack and Mankind? Yeah. So no, they I, don't say it. So then Mick Foley... Two different people. Man. Whoa. So in Whoa, comes you're Mick telling Foley. me dude love is someone separate then. In comes Mick Foley, all bandaged up from, from the uh, previous week, and he says, you know, there's only one person that can take you out, and then he pulls out his uh, button-up shirt like, like Superman, and he shows Shows the Cactus Jack shirt underneath. That man yeah. is Cactus Jack. But no, what a there, was, there was there was a there was a skit that they did. They ran for um, yeah, Monday Night Raw. Yeah, and it was where it was Mankind and Buddy Love, or Dude, Dude Love, Love yeah. Dude Love, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in the same room, and then all of a sudden, bang bang. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like and he's here, he's here, yeah. Cactus Jack. And then the look on Triple H's face, is like. No, yeah. no. <laughs> so, yes, even the, even grabbing the, the ref is... by the collar. No, <laughs> <laughs> my you gotta be favorite. I would have to say oh, that just man. reminds me of the Royal Rumble where all three of Mick Foley's personalities entered. Oh, oh yeah, in one, one match. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and one rumble. <laughs> I missed this he one. Was, yeah, there was one rumble. I forget what year. Mick Foley entered three separate times as <laughs> yeah. Cactus Jack. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Mankind and Dude Love. So think about that. They're different yeah. people. So it's like after that's he gets thrown over the top like row, he's like, they go to back there, like, well, I guess that's the last we'll see. Well, but no, he changes the, his costume. I don't know if it was the beginning with Terry Funk and Cactus Jack, <laughs> but it was something like that. But it was funny so, though because that was the same moment where Cactus Jack was flying all this hardcore stuff yeah. in the ring, like chairs. So and stuff. yeah, it must have been one of the mid nineties. I think uh, it was ninety eight. Nine. There we go. Ninety eight. 
because but, that's yeah. the same night where uh, when it was Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie, they put the right. trash can over the rocks. Yeah, there, yeah. Ha, and then they just yeah. punch yeah. him back and forth like a punching bag. Yeah, and then Chainsaw <laughs> Charlie gets kicked yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, yeah, 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 that whole rumble, <laughs> Cactus Jack gets eliminated. Here comes Mankind. Yeah. Yeah. Mankind gets eliminated. Yeah. Yeah. That, was <laughs> that was basically like the first match like in WWF at the time that had the hardcore. You know, street fight style, ECW style. And, well, it was around the time when they started doing that whole. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I did it I, when I first I I saw it on stolen pay per view. That's how we rolled back in the day. <coughs> <Stolen Black pay-per-view. coughs> Blackbird. <Black> <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what they just said, but they're racist. <laughs> I, 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 I was watching Black it for. and. When he pulled out the bag of thumbtacks, I was like, oh, wow. It's exactly like the stuff I saw in the Japanese deathmatch wrestling. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was in love. I was like, yes, Cactus Jack. You know, I did feel bad going back to the 91 hardcore match with Triple H and Cactus Jack. There was this one spot where you could see a really uh, huge gash in Triple H's calf. Oh, yeah. oh, I think he. he Do you remember the like, that, that, that was the Royal Rumble match. That was the one. There it, was he. He got uh. Body dropped on a wooden skit. Yeah, yeah, the the pallet. Skit, oh, yeah, the pallet yeah. poked yeah. right through his freaking calf, so he was bleeding oh, the whole time. Wow. That was the only spot where he was bleeding, and yeah, it was hardcore. It was hardcore. I like it. Swan, you you remember anything? My favorite one? Yeah. Um, I like all of them, but it's kind of hard to pick a favorite. Okay. I would have to say. I don't know. The only thing I don't like is Chris Jericho entered how many of them and he never won one. Yeah. And he needs to win one. Like 2012 was the closest I got they, mad at. You know, he could try right now, do his whole campaign where I'm going to win. But then considering that he's not as active as he once was I before, I don't see it happening year. anymore. By the way, spoiler alert. Uh, Whoever says they're gonna win, they're gonna win. Oh yeah! It, at one time, it was kind of <laughs> easy per day to predict. Uh, before the camera started rolling, Swan and I were just talking a little bit about the history, and I told him this one story. It, it was shortly after Eddie Guerrero passed away. Suddenly, Rey Mysterio's on. He's like, you know, Eddie was my friend. I'm gonna do. It, uh, I'm gonna enter the Royal Rumble, and I'm, I'm gonna, gonna do bring this for Eddie, Eddie. Justice. And so I remember watching it live on TV, and I just went like this: Oh my gosh, we got our winner! Yeah, like I could oh, already wow. foretell. Like, yeah. that's how I felt in 2011. I got it checked out. All, All right. right, you guys. Royal Rumble. So this is the oh, part where he gets thrown out. Oh, <laughs> <he's> out. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, he got that, eliminated. That reminds me of um, in 2012. Oh, okay, and he's I'll coming back. With Tony Midnight. <laughs> Tony Midnight. <laughs> 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 I pull over. <laughs> 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 Tony Midnight. Yeah, and the next thing you know, Khalil's gonna come in as himself. We get him eliminated. Like, oh, it's Killer Cow. Oh, shoot. <laughs> All right, see ya. All right. Well, as I was saying, it reminds me of 2012. Sheamus did that towards the end of 2011. He's like, I'm going to enter it and I'm going to win. And Heath Slater comes in. He's like, I'm going to rock and roll up and down your face. And he's like, You don't look like a journey fellow. You know, don't stop believing. Hmm. You remember, remind me of R. Kelly. I oh my gosh. God. God, drawing in at number six. <laughs> no, 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 no. We got no. <laughs> You! <laughs> Are you done selling stuff? <laughs> I don't know. Have a seat. Have a seat. Oh, I gotta get to Marini. I'm sorry. I oh, really? Overslipped. Okay. So, uh, sorry, I overslipped, but he's a punk. Okay, so this is the part no, where, where you get eliminated, I guess. So Go now. This is where the low blow happens. And <laughs> up as and over. Oh, no, 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 wait. Can we make this more classy? It's where we triple drop kick him out of there. No, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the most. Let's Adam move. Rose him out. Oh, I got a question for you, Swan. So, yeah. um. It became a, an annual thing where Kofi Kingston gets this... Um, oh, yeah, the save of life. Yeah, yeah the right. save of life. So what did you think of that? Um, You know what? Every time, I've noticed that every Royal Rumble, he magically gets saved. Yeah. But, it's a gimmick that will run for only so long. But do you think it, it right now, It do they still do it? Is it stale? Oh, they did it last year. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, so, last year's one was, I think... Oh, no, sorry. Not last year, but the year before that. They did it to where Adam Rose, when he was a party guy, he had these things called Rosebuds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where James Ellsworth started off. But, yeah, he was the guy in the hot, hot dog suit. So, do you know what, what we're talking about? No. Um, so, get so, this. So, Kofi Kingston yeah. has this uh, he has a annual g- gimmick where he has a miracle scene. And every Rumble, he's managed to save himself. Like, there was one where... They threw him out of the ring and he landed on his Oh, hands. I remember that yeah. one. Yeah, but they yeah, kept yeah. doing it after that. I, oh, yeah. yeah. So, oh, I, I see. I, I see. remember okay. one. Yeah. I saw a clip. Was that where they, the one that JBL's they, chair? 
no, um, I saw one where they throw him outside and he's on his back and they're like, yeah, he's eliminated. No, no wait, we're up. what's this? His feet are yeah, on yeah, the yeah. steps. Yeah, so <laughs> they throw him out. His feet hit the steps. He's good. But there's also one where he g- fell on top of the announcer's table and he gave, told JBL, give me your chair. And he hopped back to the ring on the chair. <laughs> <laughs> the thing, all those efforts were done and he never won yeah, either. Yeah. It would have been cool if he did those Miracles days and he actually won the Rumble. Yeah, yeah. Now it's just a crazy gimmick. But yeah. this, like, there was two years ago when he was like, oh yeah, here's one. Adam Rose was a wrestler who was like this party dude. He always come out with like entourage. Yeah. So there was a point where... When Adam Rose got thrown out, no one caught him, but they caught Kofi's Kingston instead. <laughs> and they helped him back to the ring. And Adam Rose was super pissed off about it. Wow. Uh, oh, boy. We, we got a draft of seven and eight. Two talks. <laughs> and the crusher. Seven and eight. We got the crusher. <laughs> I forgot my soda. <laughs> 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 you gotta cash in on those commission checks. I'm gonna pull a book of teeth. Tell me, I did not, not just see that. that. <laughs> or, or I'll pull off the Farouk. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Right, there you go. Yeah. No, but there's also another rumble. I remember when Drew Carey entered. Oh, yeah. You remember that one? And you then know, oh, yeah, yeah, he entered, then he jumped out of the ring. I was like, oh, it's, come on, Drew. You know what's funny, though, is that... Uh, well, Celebrity's of course, entering, yeah. a, a lot of the folks who are, I guess, overly passionate about this uh, this product, uh, uh, to put it kindly. They're the ones who thought that just having them there was just sacrilege. But for me, I was like, you know what? Honestly, it, it, it is what it is. It's have to be fine. interesting somehow. Yeah. yeah. You have yeah. your jobber eliminators, which is guys that are in, like Santino Morella. Thank God he never won one. <laughs> Remember that disaster in 2011? He almost won that one. No, but the thing was, he was a... Oh my goodness. That was the one where I like... I was actually a Santino fan once oh, well, upon a time, and that was the point. I was like, "Come on, throw him on!" Did, throw him on, he, and then he got thrown. I'm like, "Didn't oh, he was it. once on the top um, countdown of the quickest elimination?" He's that one second yeah. flat. So, uh, what I remember seeing one of, I think it was Bushwhacker Luke. He does the thing. He walks into and the he ring, just runs goes right in. Out, yeah. yeah, he gets a clothesline. <laughs> he goes backwards, land on his feet, and, and he walks right, and right he out. Walks on, right <laughs> yeah, out yeah, yeah. He just keeps going. Like, hey, but there goes Luke. In they there actually did. Luke. They count a fraction of a second of him being in there. All right. Wow. So he was in there for two seconds. Santino was in for one. But I like how Santino was like, "Come on, I wasn't ready." I'm like, "Oh God." You ran in there knowing what you're going to yeah, get yourself he, into. Yeah, he's yeah, he the thing. comic relief. <laughs> All right, so let's just go on to the card of 2017. Um, Daniel, what kind of uh, singles I, matches we have? Well, we have Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns. Your thoughts? Um, no, no, no. I was going to say my actually my favorite one is when Bobby oh, yeah, Dudley ahead. entered the Royal Rumble for the first time. Oh, the Dudley Wait, you boys, mean when he was single? Yes, that was when he was in 2015, I believe. Oh, oh that, entered, that yeah, thing. like okay. that was cool though because he, they never entered, not him or Devo. But but was that before the Dudley Boys made their comeback? Yeah. Oh, good, very good. No, yeah. But however, I will have to say I'm ready for this next championship oh, match. Oh boy, AJ Styles versus John, John Cena. Cena. <laughs> do, 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 All right, do, your your yeah. thoughts. He asked me to recognize, but I can't see him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where, where is he? No, I only see AJ last, Styles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, to specify, Daniel, I know you guys don't watch the Colonel, but the last episode of SmackDown, he's like, yeah, everyone should know who I am. I'm John Cena, recognized, but I can't see you. How do I recognize you? And then yeah, there's a meme yeah. that came out of that. I'm like, oh, I'm oh, so. Oh, that that oh, was yeah. very good. But uh, leading up to how the story has been um, developed much, before the match, it, it, realistically, you're gonna hate the story. Yeah, then like John Cena like went a wall for a little while um, he or went, something. He, he went, went off the a lot. <laughs> no, he went a wall for six months. Then he pretty much goes, "Whoever wins that match, I challenge him to a championship opportunity." What gives you the right? Thank you, because you sound like every single wrestler right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, because the know, whole like, roster is like, whoa, well, ba- that's where Baron Corbin comes in, and he's one of those NXT up and coming guys. I, you know, I can't help but think of the Mountie when he was about to face Roddy Piper. He's like, "What gives him the right to come in and challenge me in on yeah. two days' notice? I should have won this match by forfeit." The Mountie always gets his man. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> no, yeah. but by the way. Speaking of that, there was a fun moment with Dan, Dean Ambrose, I'll tell you after, and Daniel Bryan. All right. But it's to do with AJ Styles' last championship match where Dean Ambrose came to Canada dressed as the Mountie. Ah, and he because actually, he's uh, Canadian. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. But the whole point was there's a ladder <laughs> match, and he's like, you know why I'm here? 
the Mountie always gets his man. Oh, and it's just like that one point where you see Daniel's face is like, I got to laugh. I can't help it. <laughs> you know, um, the only way I could take that seriously is if Jimmy Hart happened to pop in and he says, oh, yeah, baby. The Mountie always gets his man. <laughs> or one of them or yeah. the actual Mountie. Like, oh, good God. Oh, Jacques Rougeau. He's still, oh, yeah. alive. He's still alive. He's still in yeah. great shape, But man. could you oh, imagine right, if he yeah. was to yeah. enter the Rumble this year and they're like just teasing it? But the whole story <laughs> build be up hilarious. between John Cena and AJ Styles is he's like, we didn't, you didn't beat me last time. The club, so what? Well, what happened was the referee got incapacitated. Okay. And no. the club ran to the ring and oh. did the magic killer on him. By the way, are they officially dubbed as the club in the yeah, they're promotion? Yeah, officially is dubbed. See, see, basically they're trying they to... They lost the word bullet and they're now the club. Yeah. <laughs> they, should put, they should put the Mickey Mouse. <laughs> so, in, in other words, wow. in order for WWE to have the indie fans, um, uh, you know, like, like just literally accept their stable, because mm-hmm. technically it is like a mini bi- bullet club reunion, they just wanted to call them the club, but remove the bullet because... It's, New, New Japan actually own rights to Yeah, it's trademark. actually trademarked right, apparently. Right. But however, to make it even worse, their storyline with the club is not that great anymore. They just like to beat up nerds apparently. Oh, They're bullies, that's it. So is there There's no rivals real, uh, the New Day? The New Day and anyone that looks like a nerd. So that would be me and, and everyone else that comes into so the So the store? whole WWE thing, yeah. Oh, well, I, I am ready. If I had some glasses, I'd go like this. Come on, man. <laughs> well, Daniel, the biggest, hold my, my whenever pocket protector. I thought, well, it's funny, though, because whenever I thought about it, the only two people that popped into my mind because of glasses were the Dudley boys. Oh, that would be interesting. Because then they actually had a chance to feud, but they never got into it, which would have been <laughs> fun. But also, man, wait till you hear about these guys called the Shining Stars. They're great. Oh, man. Something tells me I don't want to know about the Shining Stars. No, no, you already know them. They're so, they're a certain Cologne family. Okay, so but uh, going back, it, well, but back it, to but, this championship match. Yes, do you, John, John so, Cena was gone for so long. He just came back. He's like, I'm John Cena. Recognize, I challenge you to a championship match. Okay, I get my championship match. All right, let's do this. Well, again, I'm trying to wonder what gives him the right to just walk in from a hiatus. Because he's John just, Cena. <laughs> Authority <laughs> can't see him. Yeah, I'm trying to. Okay, so um, there is no natural build-up to the story. Yeah. <laughs> there is no I'm trying to settle to... differences from last. <laughs> but year. but were there any clues up to the promos or to how the story development went that would give you an idea as to who could actually win this? This is the one point where like there was nothing. It so was it's like, not predictable. I just walked into the room and I challenged AJ Styles and I oh, got the match. I mean, we have commissioners. They split the brands again. It's Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. With the... It's kind of weird. Though, Why can't they just have uh, one of the authoritative figures come in and say, "Wait, wait, 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 John Cena. It's not that simple, man. You gotta, you know, you well, gotta find your way up." Shane there. McMahon and Daniel Bryan said, "SmackDown's the land of opportunity," and so oh, they just boy. grant things. They just grant it. <laughs> <laughs> but they did give a chance for it to be a triple threat match, and John Cena had to beat two other guys: Dolph Ziggler uh, and right. Baron Corbin. Oh, get those are easy yeah, that's though. Right, yeah, but someone yeah. must tell yeah, me yeah, the yeah. grass is much greener. And it says, yeah, he stuff. just offered his hand, and yeah, and AJ Styles, Styles accepted. Yeah, all right, hesitantly, fine. hesitantly. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. And then you got your oh uh, your diva championship. I don't uh, call them divas. I called them Charlotte very versus Bailey. I oh so is Ric Flair still managing his no, daughter? No, the daughter turned on Ric Flair. Why? <laughs> this was a while ago, but she kind of had this epiphany moment oh, where man. she you embarrassed know, her dad. And well, the whole point was he's like, yeah, I give a lot of thank you. She's like, get out of here, old man. You're nothing anymore. They love me, not you. I'm not Ric Flair's daughter. You're Ric Flair. You're Charlotte Flair's dad, and they did this whole thing, and then it spun off into a Sasha Banks rivalry. Oh. Where at the end of one of their matches, Ric Flair came and raised Sasha Banks' hand. My question is, oh no, Charlotte wouldn't go as far as to slap her father in the face. He flops he, off she on did. his on his. Oh, she did. Did yeah. he flop on his face? No, she just he fell. Oh jeez, I, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would have preferred. A, I just love watching Flair. Fly, but then so. that makes him look weak to a woman. And you know Mick Ric Flair's character was he would he, he, he would sell to his own daughter I believe. Okay. You know. All right. So um, like these guys have like in them. But yeah, the whole story is it's Bailey, and it's her coming back because Sasha Banks effed up her knee, mm-hmm. and they had a first contender match, and it was Nia Jax versus her, mm. and she won, so she's the number one contender. But right now Bailey's like the number one enemy of Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie hates her with the passion. She's like, you get your match, but if you lose, I got consequences you'll never forget. Kind of deals. <laughs> Here's a rag. You will, you will wash my car and wax it's it your down. Cum, not the rag. The rag's to wipe the sweat in your tears. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. 
Okay, so going on to the Royal Rumble match itself. Now, oh, unfortunately, God. Swan was given a dirt sheet or a dirt report. Yeah, of it was the worst. The way they got thirty entrants. Me. Yeah, Facebook Messenger. I, I gotta oh, ask. So was this um, <laughs> Intel News from Dave Meltzer's wrestling? No, Observer it was column? from a group of wrestlers. I know, a group of wrestling fans. I know. And yeah, but it lot, wasn't. They, they might m- get their source from. Well, the, the thing is, I Observer hope they get their sources letters. wrong. I really hope they get their sources wrong because my favorite part about Royal Rumbles are you never know who's gonna come out. I stay away yeah. from it. They, like yeah. my fun one was like like I was telling you in 2015, like Bubba Ray Dudley came out, then the Boogeyman came out, then Diamond Dallas Page even came out that year. Like not knowing and seeing them just come out like that, it's mm. cool when you have a bunch of guys on Facebook and Instagram hounding their way through it all. Oh, Daniel, I think your wackiest wild card moment, the last one you saw, I think it was the part where the three broadcasters happened to be in the Rumble. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, at yeah. first, hey, he Michael had... Cole, man, he did a good job. <laughs> well, 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 he almost hit well, someone. His, first, uh, first, it was, gear. <laughs> first, it was Jerry Lawler. Like, hey, Booker Jerry, team. I didn't know you were in this. It's like, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> and then he gets to limit, like, well, you did your best, Jerry. And then but, all of a sudden, Booker As far team... as I remember, did Jerry the King Lawler ever wrestle in WWE? Cause, okay, because yeah. last time I so, ever seen him do it was all the independent stuff. Yeah, from when so he was really um, young. Law, his debut yeah, in, time, in yeah. WWF at the time was in 1993, okay. King of the Ring, because Bret Hart won it, but then oh outcomes, yeah, the smell my feet or the taste my feet match. Well, that, that was that. that was one of the finishes. So th- this was like a two year long feud, basically. Wow. So. Um, Bret Hart becomes crowned the king of the ring. Jerry Lawler mugs him from behind. He says, and he smashes his crown. He says, "I'm the true king of wrestling." So then it starts this um, yeah, really, right. really long feud, and Did it played out so well. To rumble was with Jerry so, the king Lawler. So one time, like uh, Jerry uh, insults uh, not just Bret Hart but his entire family to the point where they want to get his hands on him. So they. Um, Bret Hart got wanted to get Jerry the King Lawler in a match at SummerSlam '93, oh God, but then he comes match. up in crutches. Yeah. Like I can't do it. I got I got hit by this stupid um, driver in a car and accident. A Chicago City area. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Match. So instead, you will face my court jester, Dort, Dort the, the Clown. clown. <laughs> so he oh keeps throwing goodness. all of these obstacles and stuff in, in, in front of the Hart thing family. Though is he's where Doctor Ivan Yankum came exactly. from. Exactly. Yeah. Because after when he lost the match with Bret Hart and he had to taste his own feet. After wallowing it in pig's mud and yeah, all that Yeah, so stuff. that was the, 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 the yeah. finish okay. of the two-year-long feud because uh, one time the Hearts wanted Jerry the King Lawler at SummerSlam. It didn't work out, so instead they were given um, Shawn Michaels in the Three Knights against the Hart Brothers, <laughs> that kind of thing. I just liked how he kept finding other people to go for him. Exactly. Go, my mighty royal court. Go. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It, Here's my queen. So he did do that um, after it's, it's he also had a feud queen. with Roddy Roddy Piper. So yeah, he he was an active wrestler as well as well, no, doing like as far as I remember him as early as I can without consulting YouTube. The only thing I remembered him for really was announcing, and I only remember his real independent stuff, like when he had oh, the yeah. longer hair and the, mm. the goatee and stuff. Yeah. Like those are the fun matches for me to watch with him. Right. 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 But yeah. Okay. But yeah, I gotta say though, they didn't give Michael Cole that much of a chance. He almost hit somebody. He almost hit someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Almost. And that was the best part because they pulled him out of that match. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the um, a lot of people didn't like the fact that Michael Cole was there. For me, you know, uh, because I did they like the fact Hornswoggle was in one. Well, then they should shut their mouths. I I don't know what their opinion was about Hornswoggle. All I can say though was when I saw Michael Cole become heel and try to be a wrestler, I didn't mind it at all at all because. I grew up watching in the 80s and 90s where managers or even people who were uh, villains, doesn't matter right. if they're a wrestler or not, they somehow got thrown into these matches. And of course, they're wimps. They're going to do all these um, wimpy antics in the ring. And it is to be expected because they want the audience to feel like they want to see the guy get hurt. So when Cole gets in, I, st- I, I thought it was okay when he um, sheds off his business suit. He, and he does, has, a, he has a, a ridiculous and, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 the head. And then when he goes into the ring, he's like, yeah, come on, come on. And then suddenly Carmel comes, comes out. out. He's like, oh, shoot. Hey, truce. And then he gets clothesline. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, I was like, yeah, you know, if, if, if I, I could see Code doing that in for that. You know, yeah. hey, it is you know what, what it is. I even gave Mick Foley because I think that's the same year he went into the freaking Royal Rumble. And then that's the same year him and Santino had a fight with Sako and the yeah. Snake. Okay. So this year's... Yeah, um, so this year, you... Oh, well, what did you... Ready? you um, I guess so we'll probably roster, spoil it. Yeah. It'll be a spoiler amongst mm. all. But just because some of them were announced on Raw and SmackDown, Baron Corbin, there is The Undertaker in there. Right. Shawn Michaels is in it. 
They did um, list some of the known ones yeah, here. Yeah, Goldberg, Brock oh, Lesnar. Co- yeah, of course, Kofi Kings is going to be in it again. <laughs> right. Well, well what is he going to do of, this year? I think yeah. better. At the end of Raw, Chris Jericho did announce he's going in as the United States champion because now he beat Roman Reigns for the United States uh, title. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All, right, all right. Yeah, so this is actually pretty accurate, but a right. lot of the other ones, though. So who was the person who went it in the well leading up to the pay-per-view saying i'm gonna win this one who was the one that stood on and think baron corbin so you um he storyline wise is probably going to be the one that takes it all if not he's gonna be the guy at the end that has to challenge brock lesnar goldberg because they always like to ham up these under well not only that if there's one person of the wyatt family in that just gives me the um hint that there is the wyatt family in it okay and they're gonna try and screw over brock lesnar like they did last year huh if you didn't hear about what happened Okay. Pretty much to get Brock Lesnar back his WWE title, he had to win the Royal Rumble. Right. And here came the Wyatt family, and they all got eliminated by Brock, and they all went back in and they threw him out. Okay. So therefore, him being eliminated. All right. So that's the, oh! all the time we have today. <laughs> uh, big thanks to Maui Comics and Collectibles. Follow the store on Facebook and Instagram at Maui Comics. If you did enjoy this episode of Tuesday Morning Shenanigans, I would love to see more into the future. Like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section, or. If you did, uh, or if you have a when, random, random, the random, what's up, Doc? <laughs> if you got a random question of your own that you would love to see us answer in the next episode, leave it in the comment section and we will get to it. Swan, anything you want to plug? Hold on, I'm leaving a random question. <laughs> yeah, anything you want to plug? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I would like to plug the Nerdwatch and Nerdwatch Nation. I would like to plug. Um, Who's those guys? I don't know. Wolf House something. Oh, Wolf Friday House Night 808. Bites. I don't know what you call them. <laughs> yeah, do, do check out Friday Night Frights. It is at Wolf House 808 on YouTube. It's their own channel uh, where they publish one new episode every Saturday. Or if you tune in to Channel 55, uh, they do show it Friday night at midnight. That means Friday Eve. And then you wait until midnight. But anyways, anything you want to <laughs> plug there, Wimplo? Yeah, please check us out at the Rave Corner. And... Uh... Yeah, and please like and subscribe. All right, cool. So until then, thank you for watching this episode. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.